Hello all of you awesome people out there, you have joined at just the right time. Me and Hero here have just finished setting up another planet for the PI series and we've gone for a little bit of a change. Now the last planet we did, we were actually getting two PI resources off the same planet and then obviously to refining them into P1s. We decided that was a little bit well unoptimized so instead we're going to stick to doing one PI resource per planet and the idea being we'll have more planets getting basic resources which means in the end we'll have a lot more goodies to play with so yes have a look at the planet we're actually building on wrong one hero and there it is it's all up and running and as you can see we have one extractor at the top with all of his extractors mining the same resource and that's able to fuel eight yes eight of those factories so producing a lot more items compared to the planets we had before now this does mean you'll have to actually manage more planets and uh, you know, micromanagement might be a little bit more of a pain but in the end you'll be getting more basic resources which means as you go up the ladder and start producing p1 p2 p3 p4 items you'll have lots more at the end which means more isk so that's exactly what we're going to do now we've finished setting this one up we were kind of talking about it as we went through just didn't want to show you too much of that but we'll go through setting up the next one because we do need one more resource in order to create the p3 item we're aiming for today so hero go and grab a lava command center because we need a lava planet next and i will catch up to you once we're all ready to go And here he is at the planet, ready to go. Good on you, hero. Now, um, it's worth noting that we actually had to deviate from our original plan because we couldn't find the last kind of element we needed. So we had to change the last one to suspended plasma, which actually means that we can still build P3 items with everything else we've got, but I just needed a lava planet instead of a gas one. So as you can see, we need suspended plasma this time, and this planet has lots of it. So what we need to do now is actually just start building. So to begin with, we're going to want to find a good place to actually put our command center as here is doing this. We're going to narrow down the scan so you get a few spots around and just pick a nice group of them like uh, that one there and simply click on build and place the command center down. Now the ores and PI materials kind of move around the planet as time goes on so you might find that in a week's time when you come back there'll be nothing around you but eventually it'll cycle back around and uh, you'll be able to mine away at full efficiency. So yeah, once you've placed it, hit submit like Hero's done. And next here, you're gonna wanna upgrade it to its maximum capabilities for us. That is, well, one short of the top because we're only level four, not level five. And uh, once you've done that, hit submit as well. So that takes effect. Lovely, and the next big thing obviously which we're gonna want is we're gonna need some lava extractors. So same again, click on them and then click on the planet where you want to place it. And I'll say it again, you kind of want to keep everything as close as possible because it will help when you start creating links because links take up power load. And uh, the last thing you want to do is have everything set up, create your to links and find out that you can't do it. So uh, yeah, try and keep everything as close as possible. And like Hero's done, it's always good to actually have the links you know, created as you're going along just to make sure you can actually link everything together. Now enough about links, as you can see here, he's jumping ahead of us here. He's put the extractor down, he's now going to have all of the extractors running and uh, probably set into to five days here. Yeah, everything else is set to five days. It's always good to have everything, you know, all in line. So just once a week-ish, we need to come online and just fiddle around. So select the material we want to actually extract and then go ahead and line all the extractors up. And there we have it. As you can see from the numbers, we are mining a hell of a lot more resources than we were on the last planet. Now, the downside to this is we are going to need extra planets, which means you need more skills, more micromanagement, and that kind of good stuff, like I said. But again, the more basic resources we have to play with means the more P1, P2, P3, P4 items we're going to produce at the end, or we're going to produce them faster anyway without any stalling or anything. So uh, in my opinion, it's worth it. We will keep the odd planet running, and in the future we'll be able to see, you know, maybe we're making too much of one, too little of another, and we'll be able to tweak them accordingly to get them fully optimized. But there we go, we're all up and we are extracting. So next we're going to want to place down the basic kind of facilities we need. So we're going to need a storage facility hero. Definitely going to need one of them. That's going to act as our buffer in case we're being lazy and don't take things off planet very often. That'll just you know, take up any overflow which we have. And you're going to need a launch pad as well. Let's get them down, get them linked up, 
because the last thing you want to do is whack loads of basic industry facilities down, which we're going to do next, and then realize, you know, I forgot to actually put a launch pad there. So how are we going to get things off planet? You can't, it's just stuck there forever. So all linked up. So now we're going to want, as I said, as many basic industry facilities as we can. We managed to get eight on the last one here. Do you reckon eight again? Yeah, probably can get eight. We might even be able to go for nine. We should have enough resources to be able to fully use eight. Maybe one or two uh, over time might not get used optimally. But we have the power load for it in the CPU, so why not? So instead of doing straight lines this time here, can you do a kind of um, bubble? Like go around the outside? Yeah. Yeah, just like that. Basically, we ran out of... Um, so links last time the links were being overloaded so we had that many resources going down the links that basically it said you know you can't put any more through it think of it as like a road you've got a nice little uh, motorway going made to i don't know hold 100 cars at one time and uh, you're trying to put a thousand cars down it with the amount of resources you're pushing through eventually the game just says nope you need more links and uh, we had to set up loads that's why the last one looked a little bit messy and this looks even more messy but at least we should be okay so uh you might even be able to get one more in there actually yeah one more makes eight and one more yeah good thing do the, do the links first and then we might even be able to get nine in here like i said there's no advantage or disadvantage to having one or two too many at the end of the day so if they don't get used they don't get used and not costing us anything so there they are all linked together and i'm pretty sure yes we can get another one in there here we'll go for nine yeah, look at that. You didn't think that was going to go, did you? That's why you placed it there. <laughs> not, a worry, not a worry, mate. So there we go. Put them in. It's like you can see from the main kind of holding storage facility we've got, there's actually two links going off, and there's also another link going off through the um, through the launch pad. So we should definitely have enough links here and not run into the trouble we had last time. So yeah, hit submit. And there we go. Everything is on the planet, ready to be given commands. So let's start with the extractors like you're doing there. And um, we need to actually root those materials to go somewhere so we're going to route them straight into the lava storage facility hero but like i said it'll go to the storage facility then to the basic industries and then to the launch pad so if the launch pad fills up and the industry kind of facilities fill up and then so it'll basically just hold all the resources in the storage rather than just completely stop mining altogether uh, so yeah, now you've done that, you need to go through, like Hero is doing, you need to go through all of your basic industry facilities and tell them exactly what you're going to be making. Now, I actually can't remember either Hero what we're supposed to be making. Plasmoids, that's the one. Set them all to make plasmoids, and then you need to link the end product to go to the launch pad. We're going to use that as a storage facility, so we can launch it straight into space and get it into our ship. So again, I'm just going to fast forward time here and let Hero finish this off. Okay, so you can tell they've all been done now because they're no longer flashing that deep red. But they are still flashing, so it's missing something, and that is the raw materials to do what they've been told. So if we click on the storage facility hero, that's it, and then go to roots, because there'll be nothing in the cargo yet. That's it, click roots, and then scroll to the bottom, you should see incoming. And then from there, even though they're not actually in the container yet, we can actually tell them where to go. So create roots, and then click on the facility, and then create roots again. And job done so do that again for all of them and we'll be back and that is the last one being completed now so there's nothing left to do but hit the submit button come back in five days and reap all the benefits of our hard work so might not be the prettiest thing in the world as a hero no, but it'll do, won't it? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> right, so what you need to do next is go and get yourself an Oceanic Command Center because next we're going to be setting up a colony filled with industry facilities so we can turn all these P1 items straight into P2s and then straight into P3s. So once you've done that, meet me at an Oceanic Planet and we'll move into the more interesting stuff. So let's get into the more interesting stuff, shall we? Here, have you brought the oceanic command center with you? No? Oh, of course, we changed what we were making. We need a storm one. All right, good catch, hero. Right, um, so what we need to do now is find a storm planet, which we obviously have done. We've had to jump one system over, and it's always worth checking 
that the P2, P3 or P4 item you're making can be made on the planet you're planning on colonizing because not every item can be made on every planet. For example, we need a storm planet, not the oceanic one. Now, all we need to do is just view the planet like we have every other planet, but it's a slightly different method we go through in order to make a facility on the planet. So obviously we're not going to be getting resources, we don't need extractors, we've got a lot more power grid than that to play with. So uh, basically, let's just jump straight into it. So the same as everything else, you need to put the command center down first. Simply click on that hero. Don't need to scan, nope, because we are simply going to be putting facilities down. So yeah, we need to place that, submit it so we can actually upgrade the thing. Get it to a max upgrade. You always want to upgrade everything to max. So it doesn't cost that much. It just means you've got that more flexibility when it comes to building. Hit submit and there it is, ready to go. So basically what we want to start off with is a storm advanced industry facilities. We don't need the basic ones no more. They basically make only P1 items. We need the advanced one. So if you want to put just one of them down to begin with, Hero. And basically what we're going to do with this one is we're going to find out exactly what we need for the so P3 item we're making. And then we'll base everything else around it. So there's the one we want. So if we click on it and then find the item we're planning on making, which is... Um, I forget. Do you remember what it is, Hero? No, neither do I. As you can see, they're listed by you know, Tier 2, which is obviously P2s. And tier 3, which is obviously P3. So it's going to be in that tier 3 list somewhere. Yukomi Superconductors, that's the one. So now we've actually injected that one. If you go to the top where it says input, we've got two little red boxes. And if we hover over them, there you go. It's going to show us exactly what we need. So we need 10 units of synthetic oil and 10 units of the superconductors. So we're going to need at least another two advanced industry facilities to basically feed the one we've already put down in order to make what we want. Now I'm pretty sure actually here that they only make five units of the P2 items a go. So you might actually need four in order to uh, have like no stalling and stuff. But yeah, you're right. Go for the two first and uh, we'll take it from there. So if you go up the list towards the tier two uh, items, the P2 items will be in alphabetical order. You'll be able to find what you want there. So whilst here is messing around, I just want to point out that what we're making here, the Yukomi Superconductors, might not be ideal for you. We've basically just picked it as a kind of end game for this guide. Other than turning them into P4 items, the only thing you can do with them is make tractor beams. So if that's what you want to do, then you can copy exactly what we're doing here if you want. But other than that, you might want to pick something to a little bit more useful. Right, so once you've injected it here, have you actually found it yet? Synthetic oil, there it is. Um, just hit the install button and it'll tell you exactly what it's going to produce. So just like a thought, it's only going to make five um, P2 items a go. So you're going to need two of each. So you're going to need two for the coolant and two for whatever the other one was, the superconductors. And uh, just kind of put them as close as you can, like in a little bubble around the original one we put down. Now... Not really much else to say, to be honest, once we've got this one down, all we're going to do is we're going to put down another set of five, another set of five, another set of five, and another set of five, and get as many sets of five down as we can. We also want to make sure that we have a launch pad in there and at least one storage facility. You ideally kind of want two if you can, because you're going to be pumping a hell of a lot of P1 items into this kind of planet. So you're going to want to make sure you have the storage to be able to hold them because it's going to take a while for this thing to actually start churning through them. What we'll do now here is we're just basically going to leave you to do what you do. And we'll come back when you're finished because otherwise we'll be sitting here all day watching you mess around installing things and moving things around and creating links. That seems to be what this video is based around at the moment, creating links. So uh, yeah, just carry on, mate. You're doing well. We'll see you in a minute. And there it is. As you can see, we managed to get two storage facilities on there as well as a launch pad and four clusters all going to be making P3 items for us. We've got the P3 not flashing super red because it's already rooted to receive the P2 inputs needed. P2s are flashing red because we haven't actually put any P1s into this yet. So here all we need to do now is actually go and get the P1 things and we can set this thing running. So you might need to go and buy them off the markets because otherwise you'd be waiting days and I want to get this video out as soon as possible so everyone knows how awesome it is to do PI. So um, yeah, go to Jita, go buy the things we're missing, and we'll basically just get this thing running so we can see exactly how it works. 
And here he is. I'm starting to think he got lost a little bit then. Have you got everything we need? Oh, of course you have. So obviously we had to buy two of these because otherwise we'd be waiting days for the plants we just set up to start actually producing enough to make this work. So we kind of did cheat a little bit, but hey. So we need to put these on the planet. So to start with, we need to open the customs office like Hero is doing and open our cargo hold as well because that's where the things we want to put on the planet are currently located. So drag them over into the orbital customs office. Well done, Hero. And you can probably open the planet from here and make it a bit easier to follow what we're doing. Give it a double click. Nice. Right, so what we need to do now is simply drag everything from the orbital customs office window, which is on the left, and drag it over to the right, which is what's going to go onto the planet. And as you can see, if you look in the bottom left, we do have a transfer cost. And this is pretty much based on the tax um, the corp has put on the orbital tax kind of customs office, <laughs> which is if we have a look here. Currently set to 20%, which so isn't the best, but it's not the worst, to be honest, that I've seen. So once you're happy, you simply hit transfer. And we can see that the launch pad has filled up lovely. Uh, now, we don't really want to leave these things in the launch pad since all of our end products of P3 items are going to be so going there. If you do fill it up with P1s and then your P3s going in there, basically you'll end up with a total gridlock kind of situation and everything will stop working. So you want to do an expedition transfer and transfer everything into one of the two um, storage facilities we have. Now, we can do an expedition transfer on this every five minutes. So we should easily, with so the current planets, we've got be able to put two full loads of uh, goodies onto this planet. So we've got plenty of storage to be able to put all of our P1 items. So yeah, drag them to the center and then hit execute transfer. And you can see they've all jumped over now probably wondering why nothing's working and that's because we haven't set up any routes yet so what we need to do now is click on the storage facility where we've just put everything and tell the items exactly where to go if we click on it here and then open the storage and then click on electrolytes oxygen plasmoids or whichever and then click create route and then click on one of the there you go p2 facilities and if we were trying to put the wrong p1 item in it would basically tell you a big red message saying this is the wrong item so it won't work. It won't let you try and put the wrong stuff in. So you'll never get to the end and be like, oh, why is it not working? And find out you put the wrong stuff in. Like I say, you simply can't put the wrong stuff in. It'll tell you. <laughs> um, so again, for the art of editing, we can actually fast forward with this and uh, skip to the end when we actually hit the submit button and watch everything burst into life. And finally, everything is ready to go. It's got this last like one or two routes to create, which won't take a second. And all of our hard work and many planets later, we are finally producing P3 items. Now you can go one further and do P4, but you kind of need multiple characters for that since you can only have like, what, five planets, is it? Yeah, pretty sure it's five planets per character. To get to P4, you kind of need like two or three characters running. We've hit the submit button. And as you can see, everything is now no longer flashing. We've got the P2 items all nicely taken away. They haven't used that many P1 items. So like I said, you can easily fill this thing and still have P1s left in station, ready to go. Um, yeah, so that's it. Everything is going. All we need to do now is wait, oh, was it half an hour for each of the P2s to work? And then another half an hour for the P3? An hour. Okay, so it's an hour for the P2s to finish, and then uh, probably another hour, if not longer, for the P3s. But uh, pretty soon, we'll have lots of P3 items ready to go sell on the market, or make things with, or just, like, generally leave in space if you really wanted. But the bottom line is, you know, we're done and dusted. Right, so all I want to say is thank you for sticking with me on this video. To be honest, I did kind of struggle with this one, because it takes that long, and there's that much kind of micromanagement that needs to be done on the planets and it's hard to record everything and not be skipping backwards and forwards all over the place because well unless you wanted to watch me for the next or the last uh, two or three hours doing this stuff so i wanted to keep the video as short as possible but uh, thank you guys so much for watching 
and I'll see you right here very soon in another video. Bye-bye. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well to get some more game guides, how-tos, let's plays and live streams from myself. I also think you should check out this video just up here, but if that one doesn't interest you, then try this one. Other than that, guys, take it easy and I'll see you soon.